Really what our whole core competency is and our mission is, is to do wide area, multi-spectral imaging uh, to fly high, fly fast, and find that needle in the haystack rapidly so that a customer gets the information that they need as quickly as possible. Hi, my name is Tim Decker. I'm the Product Engineering Manager at Sierra Olympic Technologies. I'm here in beautiful Hood River at Overwatch Imaging. Overwatch is one of our favorite customers, and I'm here to talk to Rachel McKay about their company, their mission, and how they help their customer with th thermal imaging technology. Yeah, welcome, Tim. Thanks for coming by today. I'm happy to showcase some of the work that we've been doing here at Overwatch Imaging. Uh, I, as you mentioned, I'm Rachel McKay. I'm the VP of Product Operations. We started here in the Columbia River Gorge uh, in 2016, uh, and currently we're a company of 22 people. Uh, we're looking to grow, and we'll be at 34 next year. How many did you start with five years ago? Two. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe three. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, out of those 22, is it mostly engineering, sales? Yeah, I would say mm -hmm. the majority of our team has engineering backgrounds, um, and primarily we focus heavily on both the software and the mechanical side of engineering. Um, and the, the rest of our team is comprised of, we have our team that does our operations, uh, as well as our team that does business development and sales. Can you tell me a little bit about the product in general and how your product line is across the company? Yeah, so I've uh, brought one here to showcase today. Uh, we have two primary product lines. We have our TK series, of which this is our smaller example, because it was easier to put on the table. Uh, and our TK series, points down and does uh, nadir imaging, uh, wide area applications. Uh, and then we have our Ocean Watch product line, which is uh, scanning out in front of the aircraft. And really what our whole core competency is and our mission is, is to do wide area, multi-spectral imaging uh, to fly high, fly fast, and find that needle in the haystack rapidly so that a customer gets the information that they need as quickly as possible. So you're integrating lots of different technology into products like this, yes. putting them on aircraft, yes. and flying for your customers. Uh, yes and no. We, our applications are custom, custom suited for customer aircraft. Uh, so they could come with us with a multitude of aircraft, from UAVs to rotorcraft to fixed wings. Uh, we'll create the shape that they need to put it in there, um, but then all of our key core components inside um, are, are the same across our product lines. And then we do offer services where we come in and we'll help operate. Uh, but the majority of our customers are operating uh, on their own with our sensors because our user interface is so intuitive um, that anybody can use it. So you've probably put a lot of engineering effort into figuring out how to make these boxes modular. Yes. And uh, fit a lot of different applications. Absolutely, yeah. 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 <laughs> And you said that your customers are trying to find needles in haystack. Yes. What sort of needles are they finding? The one that is fresh in our minds right now, uh, we're coming off of a very, very busy fire season. Uh, so our products are in the field uh, helping support the U.S. Forest Service to fly over areas that are burning, uh, nightly missions, and we're identifying where the fire is night over night, uh, sometimes hour over hour on the big ones like the Dixie Fire. Um, and helping support decision makers with the information that they need to go in and fight and attack the fires in the best possible way. So you have a payload here. Yeah. I think you called it TK-9? This is our TK-7. That's a smaller one. We do also have our TK-9, which is larger for manned applications as well. Can you tell me a little bit about what's in the TK-7? Yeah, so this is our TK-7. Uh, we have multi-spectral imagers here so that we can see things in both RGB and infrared. Uh, and the cameras in here, the way that our application works, is that we're able to provide near real-time information in those multi-spectral bands. So from our user interface, you can switch, switch between the different imagers uh, and really get a great picture situational awareness of what's happening on the ground below. Typically, historically, how this mission has been done uh, is that a person would be in a lookout tower or they would be in an aircraft and they would have a set of binoculars and they're scanning the horizon for smoke as fast as their eyes can travel across the horizon. With this multispectral technology, we're able to also do that scan in a visible spectrum, um, but then we're also providing that infrared capability. Uh, and I think the best example of that is, is actually this picture here, uh, where you can see from the image, in, this is what you would see from an aircraft in the sky, uh, in the direction that the smoke is traveling, 
looks like that fire, looks like the wind is pushing it, uh, kind of, we'll call it west in this image. Uh, and so you would think that the fire is traveling in that same direction as the smoke because that's where it's going. But when you add in the infrared, what you start to get is this picture of, wait a minute, the hottest part of the fire is now at that northern flank. And so that is probably the direction that the fire is heading. It's traveling up the, the um, terrain here. And so now we have a different picture and a different story to tell. And the decision makers can, can go in and attack this fire differently with that different information. So yeah, there's a lot of technology that goes into compressing kind of things that you can view <laughs> with different sensors oh, yeah. into uh, decision making uh, ability. Yeah. yeah. And I think our firefighters, I mean, typically this terrain is uh, treacherous, it's out in the middle of nowhere, uh, and not great bandwidth and downlink and cell coverage or 5G coverage. Um, so what we can do internal to the payload is we can process all this gigs and gigs of data on the payload, and then we can downlink kilobytes of information to the ground. And so now we're not providing, um, we can provide the whole wide area map, but if you're on a, a cell network, we can downlink just the, the polygon and the perimeter so that you have the most important information, piece of information that you need right then. Uh, and that's really kind of the, the needle in the haystack piece of this, is that we're trying to find that small thing that you're looking for, get it to you as quick as possible so that you can be better informed. Wow. Yeah. So if you think about, you know, you have fire watch towers, which yeah. have been here in Oregon um, in the, the northwest for a long time. Yeah. You have you know, a guy or two kind of stuck in one of those towers for a long time and they're scattered out. Oh, yeah. You can really see how having an eye in the sky would, would really change the game. What we can really do now is because we're flying at higher altitudes, we're flying from, uh, typically from manned aircraft which are flying faster, we can now cover the west coast in a night, in an evening. Um, so we can provide a large amount of coverage area uh, to really provide that, that um, again, that wide area uh, most important thing quickly, rapidly, and disseminate that information to a bunch of different people uh, around. Wow, yeah, so we're here in the corner of Oregon. Yeah. Can you tell me about uh, regionally what areas you serve? Oh yeah, uh, I, what I can say is that 85% of the missions flown by the Forest Service to do aerial surveillance had one of our products on it this year. We covered over 150 million acres with just our operators alone, and with our partners and our customers that have our products, that number is probably over 200 million acres worth of fire this season. Wow. Yeah. And some of those images we looked at, um, you could clearly see, you know, one of the cool things about thermal technology is that you can see a lot of things the eye can't see. You can right. see directly through smoke. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about how you use infrared technology in those mappings? Yeah, I think another interesting um, consideration, and it's great to have Sierra Olympic as a partner in all of this, is that uh, our sensors are radiometrically calibrated. So what that means is that you can find the hottest pixel in a series of images in that set of images that we provide. And now we're not only providing like here's where the fire is, we can start to help drive that data-driven decision-making process of take that hottest pixel and automatically tell some, um, some other person in the chain of this is where you want to drop the water because that is where you'll be most effective at fighting this fire. Uh, and so those are just some examples of, of how uh, the technology that, that you guys are providing for our sensors um, really helps make a difference and in, in drive decision making. Wow, that's it. It's neat to hear about uh, the different applications for these cameras. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of amazing that that all happens in real time. Oh, yeah. Um, so the data that the sensors are collecting here is, is processed immediately yep. and then flowed down through some decision-making chain. Yes. That's pretty incredible. Yes, absolutely. Can you tell me more about uh, some of your other customers or some of the sure. other uh, missions that you're accomplishing? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mentioned that we kind of have the two product lines. Uh, primarily with the, the TK series, we're doing wide area land mapping and coverage. Uh, the other application that we do is maritime search and surveillance. Uh, so with the infrared uh, technology, what we're doing is we're trying to find a, a, like a manned overboard situation. There's a person in the water. We have a wide expanse of ocean where we need to search, uh, and our sensors quickly and automatically find that person in the water with, with thermal imagery. 
Um, some other applications where we do defense applications, um, we're doing linear infrastructure. So if there's vegetation encroaching uh, on, on an asset such as a, a railroad or a power line, uh, automatically identifying and notifying customers that, that that's an area. Um, we're doing some interesting stuff with oil detection, oil on water uh, in the different spectral bands, infrared included. Um, and we're doing some applications such as uh, counting and detecting animals, um, disaster response, um, all kinds of applications. I think the fun thing about being at Overwatch is that we're creating new market segments that just have room to, to, for disruption. Um, so things that we're talking about that we're working on this year, uh, they, they could be completely different next year because we're really creating that market space of, of what's possible with our technology. Yeah, it seems like there's a lot of opportunity oh, for yeah. implementing technology to help solve a lot of problems. Yes, for yeah. sure. The Sierra Olympic Bayou is in your TK9 payload, yep. and it's an HD long wave thermal imager. Yeah. Um, and we find exciting new applications for that all the time, and, and Overwatch is one of the more exciting ones. Yeah. Can you tell us about um, the advantages that that camera gives you in your TK9 payload? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the HD and the Lware spectral band, I think you guys are, are doing a great job of creating that, uh, and especially at the form factor that you're in. Um, while we've primarily today been talking about our applications in um, manned aviation, uh, we also do applications in uh, unmanned as well. So your ability to shrink the form factor and also still provide that high definition and that high um, wonderful resolution uh, it is really innovative in, in the work that we're doing. Part of the, the benefits that your products and your innovations provide is that we're able to detect with this high definition Lware, we're able to detect smaller features, smaller hotspots uh, within a wide expanse of area. You can see here in this graphic, this is an example where early in the fire season, um, before things got extremely busy with, with things like the Dixie fire, um, we wanted to identify small fires so that they could be caught when they're smaller uh, and, and prevent these kind of devastating impacts. Um, so what we did was we were able to fly over. Um, this is our imagery overlaid on top of a, a reference map. Uh, and those red dots are pointing out small hot spots that we detected. So this could be maybe somebody's camping at that end of the road there, uh, and it's a campfire. Or this could be a, a tree that's still smoldering from the previous year's fire. Uh, so if we can catch these when they're smaller, it again, it reduces the impact of, of escalation of these large-scale mega fires that we've been seeing. Wow, it's incredible that uh, you're able to ca capture such a large geographic area exactly. and still resolve this, those small fires. Yep. Can you tell me about uh, some changes that, that the Overwatch's technology is bringing to the wildfire industry? Yeah, um, hopefully you've kind of heard it through my messaging throughout this whole conversation. But one of the things that we're trying to drive to is a greater adoption of data-driven decision-making. Um, also, as we've kind of talked about too, like this faster and higher resolution um, fire location information. And so we can better contain these spot fires that I kind of showed that example of that will, that will grow to threaten communities. If we can tackle them when they're small, they're easier to fight. And then I think uh, the third piece that we're really trying to do is that we can collect this data on a wide range of aircraft types. So it doesn't have to be just that kind of multi-engine aircraft that have been historically used. We're now opening this up to a wider aperture so that we can um, have more assets in the air to really fight these fires um, as they grow and continue to be um, devastating to the communities. So it sounds like uh, for most effectiveness, it's important that your products are mutable and, and you can integrate them in, in tons of different platforms. Absolutely. And that's it. At Sierra Olympic, you know, we, we try to maintain a wide product catalog that yeah. can solve all, all of these sorts of things and that also makes it easy for people to integrate into different types of payloads and do it quickly yeah. um, and, uh, and, and really give lots of power for uh, these app different applications. Yeah, one of the things that we like is kind of the, the switching between form factor. Um, customers always are um, driven between technical performance and, and cost. Um, so kind of having a wide range and a whole product line that you guys provide allows us to fine tune what our customers need and give them the best solution for, for what they need. And it sounds like uh, you're always finding new applications, and uh, we are always 
trying to develop products that can meet the needs of those applications. Great. Yeah, we appreciate uh, having you guys kind of be uh, a thought leader in this space so that we have somebody here locally, a partner that we can um, utilize and, and reach out to when a new application comes up. Yeah, and we're always excited to hear about uh, different ways that we can help solve your problems. Great.